Hey guys, it is mid-September. I'm down on my favourite local, which is Princess Parade. Lovely September evening. <laughs> Sun over there. Uh, it's early evening, it's about five o'clock, so we've got about two hours of sunlight left. Uh, I should turn you around, two seconds, go. Zoom in, we've got my mate Sai having a go at some mackerel down there. I came down earlier and pulled a few in. Gonna use some as bait tonight. Um, got the whole shebang going on, got a little camp, we're gonna have a barbecue. Got my famous jerk chicken getting cooked. Now, to the fishing. On my continental rod, I am going to stick out as far as I can. And the first rig I've gone for is an attempt to bait fish for mackerel. So it's essentially a free flapper, but with big long snoods on it. There's a good few feet on that, maybe four foot. And then at the business end here, you can see I've got a stopper bead so that grips on. I can adjust where it's going to sit. And that is a floating bead beneath it. So if I've got a bait that's going to be that long, then obviously it will stop it there, stop it going up any further. Keep it, keep that floating bead up near the bait. So I'm going to waste no time. I'm going to put some fresh black lug worms on that I bought from folks in angling today. Didn't have time to go pumping. And I'm going to see if I can bait fish for any mackerel. Uh, it's pretty much on the low tide now, which isn't going to help for getting mackerel. There seems to have been a lot more around at the high tide. But that's all right, we're gonna give it to about midnight, 1 a.m. maybe, and have a big old fish off. Anyway, gonna get baited up and send the first one out. And then when I've decided what I'm gonna do with my second rod, I'll bring you back and let you know. All right, guys, so I've got the other rod set up now. I've opted for a two hook sole rig. So you can see, it's just basically got two flapping snoods coming off of it. Essentially a two flapper, pretty short snoods. Try to keep it on the bottom. 15 pound trace line above it to not put the fish off and half a lug on each hook nice and we've got a five ounce lead weight down the bottom uh it's quite a few we've got boaters out here it's been a few paddle boarders and swimmers down the way but it's not too bad at the moment anyway i'm going to get this bait out and then i think it's time to get the barbie started See, I shall bring you guys back very soon. Here we go guys, my bash rod, which is a Rampage 2. It's got a Battle 2 reel on now, also made by Penn. And on this one, I've just done a bass rig or a running ledger, whatever you want to call it. Four ounce weight, bit of leader line. Now you can see that weight can run up and down that line there. It's not fixed on that weight clip. My doggy's going to have a look, hello boy. And here's one of the mackerels I caught here earlier. Just made a bit of a messy chunk. Just gonna lob that out there and see if there's any bass about. Anyway, get this done. I'm gonna sit down and get my barbecue ready, guys. So, hopefully we've got some fish up here soon. We're losing the light. We'll keep watching the sea, see if we can see any jumping, but just have to wait and see for now. Anyway, I'll let you guys know what happened. Here we go. Hey right, guys, down Princess Parade. Um, put a few rods set up. I've just caught a mackerel on the floating rig for the first time, which is nice. Yeah, I've seen the white bait getting chased in, so I thought we'd stick on some feathers for a minute. Uh, we've got a few in the bucket already. Now, when it gets to complete darkness, we'll probably stop getting these kind of mackerel would probably turn into horse mackerel. But for the moment, it's the, uh, these mackerel coming out. Here we go guys, I forgot to even mention, it's a very crazy half hour, but I managed to catch some place in the middle of all the, uh, the madness as well. What happens when you're having a barbecue? You've got too much going on. You see, I've got the aerator in and now, trying to keep them alive. Although I think there's just too much blood in the water, so I think they'll die off and get used for food. Probably turn the aerator off in a minute. But anyway, a couple quick pictures with the place, and we're getting back in the sea. Destroyed two of my rigs because I had to chuck them both in the bucket with fish on to try and deal with the uh, mackerel crisis. 
Anyway, a couple of quick pictures, back in there go. I'll bring you guys back soon. Right guys, <coughs> it's just got pitch black now. So I've chosen my smallest mackerel. And I've got a panel running ledger through him. So we've got one hook nicked through down by the tail down there. And then we've got one hook sticking out through the nose there, as you can see. Here we go, we're focused. Now I'm just gonna take him and lob him a few feet out. And that is how I'm gonna live bait the bass. Here we go, right, I'm going to have to put my phone down while I lob him out, but I'll bring you back in a second. saying about a bone and crusher plate instead of teeth. Oh. That's what I mean. Oh. Cool, look, he's barely hooked. Oh. Just the... Alright. Just the camsis. So that's not a lot of damage for it, right? No, none at all. Here we go, guys. So perhaps he deserves to live, but he's only getting hooked a little bit. Well, I reckon he deserves to live, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Jin? I think it deserves to live, maybe. I don't know. Jin reckons it deserves to live too. I reckon they might be right. I think we'll release this one, eh? Oh, Skate isn't my favourite so meat. Like, you, you can't take it by the tail, can you? Huh? Yeah. 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 See that bone crusher plate, mate? Oh. That'll take your finger off. Oh. I don't like the idea of Maybe, you know, keep fingers to yourself, no? Ah, <laughs> uh, he's trying to get him, they can shoot it out a bit. Shoot it what out? The mouth. Jesus. Anyway, we'll let my sister take the uh, camera back while I get the hooks up. And we'll get a measure on it. Hang on, I think we might have gone upside down. We adjust, apologies for that. Well guys, <clears throat> I caught that on a bit of lugworm on a pop-up rig that was definitely not designed for escape. It's got two floating beads and a little size four hook and just a bit of lugworm. Now uh, it was aiming to catch mackerel, I don't think it's got a long enough snood on it, I preferred my last rig but that got trashed in the chaos. But uh, that has got me a four or five pound thornback rig. Or estimated about, so we'll find out the weight on it in a minute. It's an absolutely amazing creature getting my light back on. Got to, got to be careful handling these guys. There's all the spikes everywhere. Look at the spikes up the tail, all down the back. Let's get that stone out the gill for you, mate. What do you reckon, Bandit? Good fish? <laughs> hey, buddy. Let's take it over to the box. Let's see how big it is. Well, it's 
way over the uh, minimum legal landing size, which is 42 centimeters across from wing to wing. Uh, I'd say that's going on about 50 centimeters across. Lovely job. Oh, Bandy, you're excited, ain't you, mate? Now you're happy. Yeah, I'll take a couple of pictures. I want to see a film experience. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you for filming. Well, I can't believe I caught that on the pop up rig, guys. I was not expecting that. A couple quick pictures, we'll get the weight on it, and then we'll get it back in the sea. Time to put this lovely way back in the sea. And I'll take it down there. Oh, All right, shoes and socks off. Let's go release it nicely. Might be in a bit of shock, I wonder. Go on, mate, we're all searching for you. Oh, there we go. Captain's breath now is off. There we go. Slowly. <laughs> You're going to go in after him, thank you. Yeah. Good job. Right, he's moving off now. Barbecued mackerel went down well. Yeah, that was Simon's one. Yeah. Here we go, guys. Just had a reel in on the floating rig, the pop up rig, and we've got a baby smooth hound. Let's see how long he is. And he's 38 centimetres long. Little baby one, just take him with me, keep him safe from the dog. And over here, we have a very, very, very small pouting that looks like he can make a brilliant live bait. Anyway, a couple of pictures with the smooth hound and back to the sea as always. Oh. Here we go, picture's taken. And we'll get this one back in the sea. Lovely little story. Here we go. Lovely. Doing a few circles. And he's off. Lovely job. Well, I think I'll keep the pop-up rig on. It is tempting to switch it for a pulley panel on that Continental, but I don't know. I've had my raid tonight. I know I can catch quite a few of the rays throughout winter, so I think I'll stick with a pop-up rig and see if I can get any other species on it. Try to keep it interesting, uh, and I'll have a little check of my live bait on that rod in a bit. 
It's probably not a live bait anymore. But he's small enough for a bass just to come and eat. Anyway, I'll get rebaited and then we'll check another rod. Oh, very full after that barbecue. Got a few logs on there now. Keep us warm. A few mackerels in my bucket. Simon's got even more over there. Happy days, guys. Oh, here we go, guys. Reeling on the 103 flapper. And we have one dogfish. Another starry smooth hound, a tiny bit bigger than the last one. And another tiny pouting. So, keep in form. It's quite a chunk of a dogfish. Decent sized one. Oh, let's try to stop my rig getting tangled up. I think the dogfish is foul hooked through the fin there. Anyway, we've caught him. Alright, let's get these guys off the hook. And we'll get them all back in the sea. Bring you back when I'm ready to release them. Here we go guys, got these two off the hook. I think we'll take this lovely little deer and croak there guys. They can make a croaking sound if they want to. Anyway, let's get this lovely little smoothie back to the sea first. Lovely, straight off. And let's go get the dogfish. Oh, Mr. Bandit, you keeping an eye on the fish? Hey, oh, naughty bandit, you don't bite the fish. Naughty boy. And we'll release the dogfish. Flop him back in there, he swam off strong. Oh, and look at what Simon's just reeled in. He's got one dogfish and one beautiful baby little fawnback grey. Is that your first ray, mate? Uh, yes, so. Well done, Simon, mate. Thank you so much. Cracking job. <clears throat> same, same, same. <laughs> Guess we have to say it every time, eh? Oh, well done to Simon, mate. They are lovely, no matter how big they are. Right, I'll get the light off so he can take his pictures. And... We'll go rebate this rod. Now, oh, it's a free hook flapper. I oh, know. People take the mick out of people that use these, but hey ho, it's an effective rig. Now, I had it cast out quite a long way last time. I'm going to try to drop it a bit shorter and aim it at bass. Uh, I've got the live bait, obviously, aiming at bass. We'll aim some worms at them as well, because uh, I think a bass will really top my night off. I'm going to do my best to get them. Simon's on the release set. And real gentle on the baby ray, I like it. Alright, cracking stuff. Let's get some uh, more lugs and ragworms on these hooks. And we'll plop them shallow, as I said. Very nice, warm, calm night. If you can uh, make out that water, here we go. You see it's flat calm down at high view. Just got it that I uh, got my washing line rig trashed. My really long snood pop-up rig. I reckon I could have been catching mackerel now. But hey ho, I'll get a few made up for next time. And be ready. Problem is with the 15 pound snoods. And the floating beads on the end. They are very easy to tangle up. And get trashed. So yeah. If you're going to try attempt to use them. Make a few. I'll try to do a video on how to make them pop-up rigs on the channel soon along with a lot of other how to make rig videos anyway I'm gonna stop wasting time let's get some worms on get them back out of
Uh, here we go guys, just had a reel in on a free flapper. We have the tiniest whiting or pouting I've ever seen. I can't even tell which species it is. We've got another little smooth hound. There's a few of them around tonight. I haven't seen any action on the other rod, but I'll probably reel it in and just have a look. Uh, still nothing on the mackerel bait. It's not a live bait anymore, it's definitely a dead mackerel. But still just fishing with the whole mackerel there. It's quite a small one. Anyway, you know the coot. Time to get these guys off and back. I'll bring you back when I reel in this other rod here. Right guys, I decided to switch my rig. Now, we've got absolutely jing clear water out here. Show you. There we go, crystal clear water. So, I'm going to move on to a place rig instead of the float, floating rig. It's not really producing for me. At the moment, let's zoom out a bit, there we go. So, this is a two up, one down, clip down place rig. Um, size two hooks on it. And you can see it's smothered in the green and black beads and a blade. So I'm going to clip it all together, make it aerodynamic. You see it's got one below the weight here as well. Now it's just got half a ragworm on this hook, half a lug on that hook, half a lug on that hook. I'll clip it all together, make it aerodynamic. We'll send it out there. Uh, see if there's any more place about. Had two little ones earlier. We'll try to get a bigger one. Right, let's get it clipped again. and voila, it's all clipped together. So I'll just show you how it works. The one below the weight, you clip on to the hook of the breakaway there, and then you arc the snood line over this little bit that I manufacture out of paper clips and one millimeter earth cable casing. And it loops down and clips on as a show jar. You then take the next hook above, and you will have made the rig so that it fits perfectly onto the breakaway hook as well. So you've got two hooks hanging onto that breakaway hook. And then the snood of that line will have a cascade swivel attached. I know it's hard to see it. But that's got a little hook that the uh, hook above then hooks onto itself. You can see it there pretty clearly. Ish. Anyway, that's made it all nice and aerodynamic. Let's send it out there and see what happens. Uh, I did see some action on the middle rod on the free flap already. So we'll have to see. Anyway, time to cast. Bring you back in a bit. Alright guys, these are the final reelings of the night. We've got enough. We've had some good fish already and I think there might be a couple of fish on. It's been an absolutely stunning night, look at that moon. Zoom in on that. Lovely. Uh, not the target species on the flatfish rig at all. We have one tiny whiting and one pretty reasonable sized dogfish. Uh, that's the last reel in of the night on that rod. We'll see if we've got anything about on the free flapper in a minute. Yeah, you know the coot. Quick picture, back to the sea. I don't think this whiting is still alive, unfortunately. I think he's died on the way in, but I'm sure something out there will eat him. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I've reeled him. Yeah, I'll bring you back really quickly. Simon's just walked over with his catch, and he's got two reasonable sized dogfish there as well. So it looks like the dogfish are moving in in force. Probably time to call it a night. Eh? Let's see it. Time to go. Hey guys, right. Last fish of the night, probably, unless the bass rod over there suddenly kicks off. Uh, it's another dogfish. Uh, they're obviously here in good numbers. A few weeks' time, there'll be absolute carpets of them out there in the winter. Anyway, lovely session, good variety. 
and a great night all round really. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching and we'll see you again soon.